Good morning everyone and welcome to my daily Haskell Kata. Uh, today I'm going to do the bowling game Kata. It's a uh, new one. Um, I've seen it by, done by Uncle Bob, I think, in Java. Uh, but that, of course, is an object-oriented language. Uh, the Kata also assumes that you can create objects. Let's see what we can do in Haskell. Um, as you can see, I also changed my theme to dark. Maybe that's easier on the eyes for people. Um, link where you can find it is uh, in the description. I, th I see that that site has more kata, so I may switch up uh, between these kata. Okay, um, first thing we are going to do is read what's happening. The game consists of 10 frames. Each frame the player has two rolls to knock down 10 pins. The score for the frame is the total number of pins knocked down, plus bonuses for strikes and spares. A spare is when the player knocks down all 10 pins in one in two rolls. The bonus for that frame is the number of pins knocked down by the next roll. A strike is when the player knocks down all 10 pins on his first roll. The frame is then completed with a single roll, and the bonus for that frame is the value of the next two rolls. In the 10th frame, a player who rolls a spare or strike is allowed to roll the extra ball to complete a frame. However, no more than three balls can be rolled in the 10th frame. Uh, the requirements and the starting point. Uh, the yeah, write a class game that has two methods. Uh, void roll int is called each time the player rolls a ball. The argument is the number of the pins knocked down, and the score returns uh, int score returns the total score for that game. Now there are, uh, are some starting points. Uh, I looked them up. Um, there should be some starting. Uh, project templates for Haskell uh, as well, but uh, I didn't see the bowling game kata there. And anyway, I want to start uh, with this template. Um, well, in this case, anyway, because I'm not sure what to do otherwise. It might be nice to find um, how well which functions are defined to be testable, but there's uh, the fizzbuzz kata and uh, another one. You have, have a look at it, it's, it's interesting to see. Um, uh, yeah, let's see what, what we're going to do. I think we should define the functions first. Of course, there is no class game, but let's say we play... Uh, would it be possible to get the score if we didn't roll any balls? So we should be able to provide rolls. I mean, um, there's a function, uh, a method that you give an int, which is uh, the roll of ball, and returns nothing. And of course, the game object would uh, keep state. So if you call this function, there should be some state, and it should return something in the functional uh, programming language. So let's say that we need to have this function that we give an int, so we call it roll, we give it an int and we get back a game. And uh, because we might already have something, a game is not just one roll, uh, we give it a game and then we return a game. That's a way to keep state. Uh, we have a game object, we call it a roll and then we have a new game object. That's the changed state in the uh, object-oriented languages. So we also need to have a type. And let's say we have an int in there. I'm not sure yet. So we have the, the it doesn't have a name, wall uh, pins. Knockdown pins, is, it is. Uh, game, and then we get another game. Well, this is the simplest method we can have. Ignore the first argument and return the game that we have. Now export it. Um, and let's see here. We should test it somehow. Um, 
if we if we don't use it, the game should be zero points, I guess. I'm not sure what to do here yet. This won't work. Um, let's start with score. I think that's uh, something we can test. We still should have a game. I we should be able to have a game we call the score for. So that would be the other method. If we have a game, we want to see the score. And that's an integer in this case. Oh, this one probably easier to write tests for. If we have a game. An empty game should return zero. Well, something we need to do is be able to construct a game. I do not want to expose the constructor. Let's say new game just returns the game. So it can be a, a an object with hidden. Uh, inside and let's start like that um, of course I saw the error we need to have um, instances for show and probably also equal so that we can compare and that we can show what we need to do oh is not asked for yet. Okay, what happens? No game is not used. No, that's true. Export it. Okay. Yeah, and this undefined we do can use. So let's see. Not sure what the time is now. Seven minutes in. That this should be a do, I guess. That game is new game. Kata, new game. Well, we have an empty game and the score is zero. That's how it starts. Ten frames. Each frame, the player has two rolls, not done ten pins. The score for the frame is the total number of pins knocked down plus bonuses, of strikes, and spares. So let's say we roll ten times, and all those ten times we should get. Well, zero points. So that's 20 rolls. And if we roll 20 times, it should return still zero for the score. So it doesn't matter how many times we roll. Um, I'm also deliberating whether we should return a score on a new game, whether it is a, a real test. It shouldn't really matter. Uh, an all zero game. And now we need to, to feed it uh, a zero ten times. And there's the fold function. Fold from the left and, well, uh, 
always use the prime method uh, for strictness. Fold and function from uh, game and a new score. Let's say pins. Should be roll pins on that game. Well, the fold, will, fold left function you give um, a function from a state and a new object or a new uh, number, wait, new input, and uh, what it should do with it. And it should return the new uh, state. And then you give it an initial state. Is that true? That is, this is the new game. And finally, the list of uh, objects that you want to feed it, and that's replicate twenty times the zero. So, um, if we give it twenty zeros, this, the result should still be zero. Well, it is. We could have expected it because a score always returns zero. So this is nothing new. Uh, we need to do some changing somewhere. How can we avoid this? Ah, flip fold. That's a function. That's a function from Reload, I guess. Uh, so these were the two steps that I did for refactoring. Um, uh, if you flip kata roll, it would uh, flip these arguments so it has a game and then gets the, the pins. And returns the game. It's exactly the signature that we need in the fold left function. And uh, apparently, if you use fold left and flip, there is a flip fold function. So that's interesting. I will use it. Our next thing what happens if we will. Um, 20 ones. 20 should just give us a score of uh, the sum of each frame, or shouldn't? Um, because there's no strikes and no spares, and uh, so there's no extra rolls. And it just gives us the score for the frames. There's no bonus. And it should return 20. Finally, failing test. Took us a while. Um, and I'm really guessing that if we have some pins and a game, we could just add it. Oh, score is not a good name. Uh, that's the current game. Mm. Let's rename this new type somehow. Um, get score end. And we will not export it, but we will use it here. game and we create a new game uh, with the score is the get score from the old game before rolling plus the pins and we still have no uh, success but that's of course because if we have the game here we should return the score from that game not just zero and actually that means we have a function that is just the selector this record. Well, it works. We have a successful test. What can we do otherwise? If we have the first roll would be a spare. So we roll two fives. 
and we have a spare. And that means the second frame would, the second frame? No, the second roll. The bonus for the frame is a spare and two rolls. This is the next roll. So if, have, if we have one spare, So we have spare and then all zeros, no, all ones. And then we have 10 in the first frame and the next row would be one. So that would be 11, 12. My, so we have 18 points just for the ones, 10 points for the f spare, so that's 28, and that one comes double, so it will be 29. Okay. So we have a game, we still have 18 ones, but we have, uh, let's say, a 5 and a 5 before that. So this is interesting. Now we need to have some more information because we don't know if we can just add the score. We should know if it's a spare and if we know what the last frame was. not have a list of ends but a list of frames I guess because then for each frame we can decide what is the uh, what kind of frame is it is it a spare or is it a strike or is it a normal so it doesn't have a get score we have a get frames of int and int. Um, each time we roll... Ah, no, we're not sure if, it, if it's completed. What if we just have a list of ints? So we do get rolls. If we just make it a list of ints, and each time we have one... Uh, just append that uh, that role so if we score the game we do get roles for that game so we have a list of the frames in the usual case we can just sum them so this should uh, a new game is an empty uh, list so this should uh, fix the first three tests uh, it should keep the first three tests it does, but if we want to see frame by frame, we have to fold somehow again. So let's say that if we score everything and we start with zero and we have a score for the score so far that we call the accumulator and then we have a list uh, so if we don't have uh, this is a recursive, a recursive function so if we have no more frames to do we just return what we already had and if we have a list with at least two so that's th this would be a complete frame. Um, so it's roll A, roll B, and 
the rest of the game. Normally it would be a plus b plus the score of the rest. So this is, um, wait, let's pass it as the accumulator. So this, uh, except for the issues with Now, so this is still some, but uh, with more with extra steps, um, because uh, we can check here whether, and now we get uh, the spare here. If a plus b is ten, uh, then we need the next ball as well. So I forgot that equals uh, in booleans is double s, uh, the double equal equal sign. Um, so if the a plus b is ten, the score should take into account the next. Ah, and it might not have one. Well, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have one if there is no rest. So this is frame. Zero. No, that's not this. This would be from the next frame, and we have C, but we use it for the score of the rest as well. Yeah, uh, we need to define this one. If we don't have an A, B, C, and the rest, so it means we don't have at least three items. We have two items, and we just sum them. We get 14 on all one game. And if we have a list with no rolls, we should get back nothing, uh, what we all had so far. If we have a list of at least three rolls, we take the sum of the first two, what we already had so far, and score the rest. Oh, wait. We also have to do this here. Yes. So we just skip the ball each time. That's that's really not good. Um, so a spare works here. Finally, we have one spare. What do we do if we have the spare somewhere in the middle? We have one one spare. And the spare is in front. So we still have 16 balls. It should have the same score, shouldn't it? And it does. Okay. Why don't we have a strike somewhere? So let's start with a strike. Um, it should return, th I say, yeah, 30. But the strike is only one 10 ball. So if we have a 10, we can't have the 5 anymore. But we only have 18 balls left. Hmm. So this should, uh, yeah, we should detect, mm -hmm. we should detect a 10. In the first place, you see me enthusiastically nodding. 
um, if we have a 10 here, then there is no B roll in the frame. But we have a, I should rename these, I think. Let's say, yeah, let's call them C and D for now. Because now we will have to do, uh, of course, the score of what we had so far, plus the 10, plus the C, plus the D. And then um, we need to score everything from C again, as if they were new frames. But it shouldn't return 30. Why should it return 30? Um, so I have 10 frames. The first is 10, the rest is 1, so the rest would be 18. But 2 are double. Yeah, it should return 30. This is really stupid. This works. What if we have the strike in the middle? I may run out of test cases. It should also return 30, shouldn't it? Yeah. It does. And I really want to go on. Um, we still have four minutes, three minutes. Um, if we do a game with all spares, then we have 10 in the first frame, but it counts as 15. The next frame counts as 15 as well, because it still has one. Um, and we have an extra roll because in the last frame, after the first 20 rolls, um, we, we have a spare, so we can have one roll in the 10th frame. I would do have an extra, extra frame. In the 10th frame, a player rolls a roll, a uh, rolls a spare or a strike is allowed to roll the extra balls, but no more than three balls can be rolled. So there is at max 21 rolls, and we have 21 50s. And that means we have uh, the first and the first nine frames are each fifteen then, and the uh, last frame is also fifteen because it's three fives. So it would be ten times fifteen is one hundred and fifty, and that would be all fives. Let's specify that the last one is a five as well. It's uh, 21 fives. Let's see if it works. It doesn't. It returns 155. And now I have to check whether my test is wrong or my reasoning uh, or my code. If we have If we have five plus five, well, can we draw this? I think I need to leave you here because it's half an hour. We will try this again tomorrow and see, uh, I will look up whether I was wrong <laughs> in my scoring. Uh, I'm not a fervent bowler. I don't do that, that um, as often. Um, let's see what happens. Um, if you have any ideas, uh, of course, let me know in the in the comments. Um, if you would have approached this differently, also let me know. Um, I would say don't spoil newcomers, but well, they will see the video anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope the dark theme is better on your eyes, easier on your eyes. And uh, well, yeah, I see you tomorrow. Have a nice day.